so that's then this dot these people connected. were yeah people were now seeing what i was doing because now there's the internet okay i want us to talk about cyberbullying mm-hmm. i'm a dude who is behind the camera who experiences cyberbullying imagine so I, now what and more? with male <laughs> privilege and you're still getting it so we say us who are seen as second class citizens wait it's tough out here <laughs> it's tough. Mm. actually no i'm I'm not even joking about mm. this stuff. There, there are times I've just been like, why on earth am I doing this thing? If, if this bugger here is only going to put this random comment, yeah, uh, using my own money, my own resources, my own time, my mm. own energy, my, it's you understand this world, yeah. And yet, then somebody ha- or a bunch of people have the audacity to to reduce it. Yes. Thank God, I've got some skin enough to be able to focus what i do is i focus on the vision mm-hmm. and i focus i've, I've learned caroline taught me one thing she told me i don't read positive comments i don't read negative mm. comments and i always thought like what do you mean behind the scenes me and derek are the ones who did caroline's mm. digital thing i remember i yeah. remember her telling me actually yeah, yeah. so so i would read some of the comments and be like caroline they're saying this like well, i'm not interested don't don't read positive yeah comments. i just focus on what what it is the vision so that's been one of the best lessons that i've learned to keep on this road yeah now i'm nowhere near the fame where you, you you've had on the kind of platforms that you've been how mm. have and i'm not a guy I'm, i mean i'm a guy i'm not a guy yeah <laughs> 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 um which i've understood is a privilege especially in africa absolutely also also globally mm-hmm. how have you been able to deal with that madness become better at it and obviously the platforms have become better in giving us tools to deal with it oh. so currently like i'm mute towards toxic feminists if you call me in fact if you are true and you're watching don't bother calling me that i won't see it it's <laughs> muted <laughs> i literally will not see oh, it nice. so try another one uh. then at least now you can let me know what else to be muting you know <laughs> so at least i know muting um words words keywords keywords that's so powerful i didn't mm. even know you could mute keywords you can okay you can mute words on twitter especially which yep. is one of the most vile platforms yeah um but I, I wasn't always like this i remember once going and i i, I wouldn't um go into details of that particular situation yeah, yeah. but it was like a local gospel artist who's just cantankerous and said a lot of lies about me and because he was younger i was like this is youth confusing this one so i'm not going to go to to with this idiot but people i had a whole day a whole day of trolling mm. as in i couldn't even tweet about my show okay. type of trolling morning to midnight <laughs> i was even just like yeah, easy bundles. <laughs> As the issue. <laughs> and I remember one of the things that hurt me from a person on Twitter whose uh, picture was a Bible and whose bio was husband, father, and Love child of, of God. <laughs> he told me that, in fact, I look like I have AIDS. And I, I, I tea, that's probably why I was raped. Something, that one stung. Eh, that one stung. I remember going to an interview that day because I was pushing something. And the interview ended late at night. It was the, tr- the trend. Mm. Late at night and I, I was parked outside Nation Media. And I got into my car and I just cried. I was like... Wait, today has been long. Mm. <laughs> like, I was just like, wait, what was that? And even when now when I was leaving, um, the because I was focused on the interview, and so when I was leaving, the tears are coming, and I'm in the lift with the Ascari because it's late at night, yeah. to, and I'm like trying to, so you know, like you're trying to turn and just balance in, and it's still I'm like, hey, but now like <laughs> we're about to get to the car, so you just pull it Maintain. together, please. <laughs> And I cried. I cried. That one felt really, really bad. That was one. The second one, I also wouldn't say this person's name because I think no, they, get, they get a high off of it. Mm. 
was about after I'd had a forum with, it was after I got named uh, one of BBC's 100 women. So mm. I, I decided to have a forum where young girls in campus could talk about street harassment and sexual harassment. And it was really good, you know, and we live streamed it, mm. blah, blah, blah. This person goes on and says how I don't, I don't even look, um, what is, attractive enough to be, to sleep with voluntarily, let alone be raped. Okay. That one, what I'll say is I saw a change in Kenyans online because they were called out. Mm. Um, I think I was disappointed in men in the media industry because they didn't use their privilege to call it out. It was everyday Kenyans who are doing it. Mm. But men in the industry, they'll just DM, Ay, gosh, Paul, eh? gosh, I can't believe you're going through this. And I'm like, say something. Watch. Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> so that one, did that one break me? No. That one, I used it as a teachable moment because I knew there were things that I wanted to see on rape culture, on sexual violence. Mm. And I was like, this is going to be the example I'm going to use. I had a whole spread on the star with my entire statement. That was a full article. It was published fine white. Nice. And then after that one is when I was invited to that UK um, conference. For, yeah. And that begins a whole other career for you mm -hmm. in terms of in terms of representation in conversations. Yeah. Whew, that is powerful. Yeah. And you so you were you told Kiss man, I need off. I need to go for this thing. Now that became a tough thing, eh? Because you know it's tricky to get leave days when you're on air. And then you're two of you, so you have to manage <laughs> 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 who's going when and yeah. who's whatever. And now that my my speaking engagements are becoming more it's getting harder. Okay, so what's happening? The, that that UK one opens up more doors for it you. It opens up more doors. So like what examples? Um, after that, maybe not even a speaking engagement. After that, I got now, uh, I did a partnership with a local brand, well, a global brand, but with a local office. And I needed to go to Monaco. <laughs> I need to go to Monaco as uh, to to watch the Formula One. Um. <laughs> that doesn't sound like work. It sounds like what I want to do in my life. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Please. Me who didn't understand the damn thing let, about Formula let One. Let me just say, Richie is a serious fan of Formula <laughs> One and is willing to do oh, a city on a yacht. <laughs> now, it, it was the works. That is crazy. It was. Whee! So wh what were you going to I do? I went with Mina. We were the brand ambassadors for a campaign where people were winning a chance to go and watch Formula One. Yeah. Um, and, oh, it was beautiful. Was it with a bank? No, an alcoholic beverage. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, and, and it was very funny because it's, 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 it's a whiskey. And I think what they were trying to do as well is to make it okay for women to mm. enjoy this very male skewed drink. Mm. And so what I didn't understand, because first, like, why are they coming to me? Why are they coming to me? I'm not turn up. I'm not, mm. I don't do club appearances. I don't yep. do all this. But it's women empowerment and yep. women, those conversations. We're smart, very smart on their end. Yep. And so, and this is 2018 where I've decided I hate being on the breakfast show. I want out. Was that brand, was that trip to Formula One also, or were you being paid? Yeah. So now I'm doing all of these gigs because I'm like, I need to hit my savings goals because I need to get out. You had savings goals? Yeah. Because I was like, man, once I jump out of employment, <laughs> man, I don't soft life to end. <laughs> I don't soft life to end. <laughs> so now Monaco, that one was easier because it was me and Mina. Mm. So it was easier to manage, and the brand was advertising on Kiss ah, at the time. That one was like, so I could like, no, 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 no. You guys. but I extended because I was then afterwards I was going to Scotland for um, a friend's wedding, and and then I and I, I thought that was going to be the only trip of the year. Yep. I come back, and then I get a DM on Instagram from some chick with a South African name. She's like, "Yo, this particular brand is doing." Um, a big thing at the end of the year 
and we want to work with you because we've been seeing that you've been doing some causes around like raising awareness around women and and programs that benefit women so we want to work with you blah 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 and so what that will entail is yes social media posts but we want to fly you down to south africa you come and visit all of these programs and then the last day we'll go for there because the brand was one of the sponsors for the global citizen mm. concert we'll go to the concert that was a huge with, concert with beyonce yeah yeah and <laughs> Trevor Noah was the host. <laughs> like you're just saying a concert like it's tiny. <laughs> so 